right up at the top of the screen, right here, this adjusts the number of samples that the digital picoscope takes across the entire screen. This is set to 1 million samples for the entire screen. Let's take a look at what it means to have a sample rate on a digital storage oscilloscope. When the digital scope takes a picture or takes a sample, it will create a dot on the screen. As the dots go across the screen, the picoscope will connect those dots. So if you have a low sample rate, there's a large gap between the dots. However, if you have a high sample rate, the dots or the gap between them are very, very close. Therefore, the data that you have is much more accurate. Now, the pattern on the right will draw the line in this fashion. Now, the pattern on the left should look like the pattern on the right. However, because of the low sample rate, you get an erroneous signal. Let me give you an example of what that looks like. Here I'm at 1 million samples across that screen. If I lower this value down to something really, really small, like 500 samples across the screen, there's not even enough samples for it to trigger properly across that trigger, and we lose accuracy. If I bring it up just a little bit more, it's trying to trigger but there aren't enough dots on that screen to trigger on. When I get somewhere around, say, 1,000 samples, 2,000 samples, it's now getting enough where it's very close to being able to trigger. And at 10,000 samples, we now get a relatively stable trigger, and the pattern is looking a little bit more like what we're used to seeing. I've reset my samples back to 1 million samples across the screen. But there's a very interesting relationship between the number of samples you have and your time sweep or your time base. So what we need to do is we need to come up to the View menu, and we need to go ahead and view the properties. Now this brings up the property windows over here on the right. Now there's three bits of information I want to point out to you. Sample intervals, that is the space between the dots. In this example, we are sampling or drawing a dot every 50 nanoseconds. The sample rate is we are sampling 20 million samples a second. And the number of samples we're getting across the entire screen or across the sweep is 1 million samples. Because of this, we can get 31 frames of data. Now watch what happens when I change this to 2 million samples. First of all, when we go to 2 million samples, there's so many dots of information that we only have 15 screens, or we lower the buffer because the buffer is full at only 15 screens. We are now sampling at 25 nanoseconds, so half the amount. So we're sampling more dots than ever before. The sample rate is 40 million samples a second, and we're now sampling 2 million samples across that entire screen. Now I'm going to reset this back to 1 million samples, and I'm going to change my time base because they are directly related. I'm going to select 500 microseconds. And of course our pattern changed, but what's more interesting is if you come over to the properties window, you'll notice that we are now sampling every 12.5 nanoseconds. So we're even sampling at a quicker rate. We are now sampling 80 million samples a second, and we're only getting 400,000 samples as it goes across the screen. And that's because the time across the screen is much less than it was when we had the larger sweep value. Because we have lowered the size of the screen, we are now able to do 32 windows or 32 buffer windows during this capture at this smaller screen size or smaller sweep. Let's now see the results of changing our sweep to 100 milliseconds per division. Now we got more patterns on the screen, 
but our sample interval has now moved to one microsecond. So one dot every one microsecond. Our sample rate is one million samples a second, and we're still getting one million samples across the entire screen. Well, why is that? Well, the entire screen is one second's worth of time. The conclusion is sample rate and sweep will determine how many dots or samples you have across the screen. It will also determine the detail of the pattern and it will determine the file size. Choosing something that has a lot of dots or has a very fast sample rate is not necessarily the best selection if you can obtain the same quality of waveform at a lower setting. This will keep the file size lower. So let me change this to one second per division. And then let me turn this down to 100,000 samples a second. Now if you take a look at this pattern, that's pretty close to what we had a minute ago. Let me bump that back up. There's 1 million. And there's 100,000. We lost very little detail here, yet the file size is going to be considerably smaller. As shown earlier, if I continue to lower the scale down to 1,000 samples a second, you'll now see that I'm having a trigger problem. And if I continue to go down to 100 samples per second, well, the pattern is totally screwed up and the waveform is unusable.